to do is on the worksheet that I gave you, you'll see at the top, it asks you to write down some feelings. And this is what I want you to think about. I want you to think about what it would be like to be forced to leave your home, leave family and friends, not knowing when you will ever see them again. Uh, forced to speak a different language, forced to practice a different religion, forced to wear clothing that you're not comfortable in, that's not familiar to you, cut your hair, everything. So I want you to just take a minute and just write down the words that you would associate with all of that. Okay, just give one minute. And it's right. What are some of the words you put down? Yeah. Uh, why don't you give me one? Um, frustrated. Frustrated, really good. Yeah. Treated as a fair. Mm-hmm, good one. Yeah, like a slave. Okay, slave, good. Annoyed. Annoyed, yep. Any others? Okay, those, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that I would have to be stranger in going to new schools. Yeah. How would that make you feel? You had to meet strangers and go to this new place, everything was unfamiliar. Sad. Would it be scary? Yeah. I mean, I'd be scared. Yeah, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say sad. Sad, yeah, absolutely. Someone else in one of the other classes said bitter, which I think is a really good word. Um, so all of that was happening for the Native Americans at this time of westward, westward expansion, okay? The other thing I want you, so I want you to keep that in mind, you know, as we're talking about the westward expansion. The other thing I want you to keep in mind is that this is really a story of a long process for Native Americans. Okay, so the policies and all the stuff that we're going to talk about today isn't just distant history. Okay, so all of the things that we're going to talk about, talk about today have an impact today for Native Americans. So, for example, so here's just some things that um, I pulled out from some of the more challenging aspects of being a Native American today. Five times the unemployment rate of white Americans. Eight out of the 10 poorest counties in America are majority Native American. Native Americans are more than twice as likely to live in poverty, more likely to commit suicide, more likely to abuse alcohol and drugs and die at a young age. So all of this, all of the challenges that Native Americans face today are rooted in the policies that were implemented over 150 years ago. Okay? So it's all connected. So I want you to keep that in mind as we're going along. Okay. So this is about 1850. What do you think the red represents? Yeah. Um, what the Native Americans. Um, Mm -hmm. Where they were living predominantly? Absolutely. So this is 1850. What do you, what's going on in 1850 that you've learned about? Yeah. Um, no, no. Yeah. Westward expansion. Westward expansion, absolutely. Anything yeah. what their lives are like. And then here, 1880, I mean, dramatic difference, right? Dramatic difference. So now we're getting even more concentrated in small pockets. And then here we are today. So here we're seeing, these are the state and federal reservations where Native Americans, not, obviously lots of Native Americans live off reservation, but these are where the reservations are. Something else is happening at this time. So we have reservations being created, settlers moving in, kind of pushing Native Americans out. There's also another thing happening that is actually killing a lot of Native Americans. What is it? Railroad? Well, not the railroad. It's definitely having a big impact, though. Yeah. Disease. Disease, exactly. So some estimates of 95% of Native American population killed by disease. So that's huge. You know what kind of diseases were big at this time? Yeah. Smallpox. Smallpox. Yeah, what else? Ebola. What is it? Ebola. Oh, Ebola. No, no, I don't think it's not Ebola. Any others? 
knees? Yeah. Yellow fever. Yellow fever, maybe. I don't know about that. You may be right. But measles, mumps, yeah, is that what you were going to say? Pneumonia. Pneumonia. Probably pneumonia was absolutely. Rubella. So all of these diseases were killing off millions of Native Americans. Why do you think it was so deadly to them? Yeah. Is there a new area? Okay. Okay, so that's exactly, so we have new diseases, right? So what happens when you get sick and then you're exposed to the same disease later? Yeah. You have antibodies already, already built up, so you don't Bingo. get Exactly. You get the antibodies, so you get an immunity, right? So the Native Americans had no immunity to these uh, diseases that the settlers were bringing uh, into their area. So that's why it was so deadly. Okay, so here's President Andrew Jackson. Why did he want to relocate Native Americans, do you think? Yeah. Um, I am taking a guess. Uh -huh. um, maybe to make new space for other mm -hmm. settlements. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. So they don't completely just Okay, so in other words, a, a, a helpful thing, you know, to, okay, I see what you're saying. Anything else? Why why make room for the settlers? Like, who cares? Yeah. Because a lot of people are coming to America. Mm -hmm. Lots of people are coming to America. And we had all this land, right? We had all this land, and Jackson wanted settlers to sort of claim it for America and make use of it. Right? We're going to make America this big, strong country. We've got to make use of all this land. So that's part of it. Okay, and so here's a, a quote that I think pretty well illustrates kind of how people thought about Native Americans, or at least how Americans were thinking about Native Americans. All preceding experiments for the improvements of the Indians have failed. They cannot live in contact with a civilized community and prosper. So what I'd like you to do is just take a couple minutes, and you can do this with the person next to you. What, how would you define civilized? Okay, so just jot down. Okay, so let's hear what you guys came up with for civilized. Yeah. Rights. Rights? Okay. What else? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so innovation. Okay. Indoor plumbing. Indoor plumbing. That does sound civilized. Okay, what else? Yeah. Um, mature. Mature. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah. Homes. Homes. Okay, that's a good one. Anything else? Okay, those are all good, and that probably is a lot what, of what you know, Andrew Jackson and others thought. Here's what Congressman Henry Dawes thought. He said to be civilized was to wear civilized clothes, cultivate the ground, live in houses, drive or ride in Studebaker wagons, send children to school, drink whiskey, and own property. So that's how he thought of being civilized. So basically it was living like sort of Europeans would live, right? So the Native Americans obviously lived very differently, so that was thought of as uncivilized or savage. Yes, the back savages. Yes, savages, exactly. You've heard that term a lot. I've also heard it from a song. <coughs> so at this time, we you know, we have the relocation of the Native Americans, we have disease, and the Native Americans were finding ways to fight back. So in 1876, General Custer, he is looking for gold in the Black Hills. And he finds it. And what do you think that the American government wants Custer to do once they find this gold? Yeah. Collect it. I take it. Or and how, how or make it possible for settlers to take it, right? So we gotta clear out the Native Americans so that settlers can come in and safely mine for this gold, okay? So he comes across a Sioux Indian tribe. So Custer has 700 soldiers with him. And he comes across a Sioux Indian tribe of 7,000. 
and he decides to take them on. So here is a painting of Custer and uh, his soldiers with the Sioux Indians. What do you notice about the picture? What strikes you? Yeah. Um, I have friends in Sioux Channel that they completely failed and didn't wait for better weapons, so they didn't have very good weapons. Yeah. Good it was a disaster for Custer. Yeah. What else do you notice? Um, there's a big line of Indians. Uh huh. Yeah, you can kind of see like. It looks like more Native Americans are coming around the bend, so like reinforcements, absolutely. Anything else you notice? Yeah. Oh, um, there is a lot of dead soldier, which means that it mm -hmm. looks like a really stupid idea for him to take them on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see a lot of dead soldiers lying in the foreground there, absolutely. So it's looking like it's not going very well at all for Custer, and it didn't. Uh, every single one of Custer's men died that day. Did Custer die? Custer died as well, yeah. It, absolutely. They all died. Yeah. How many were, how many were you saying? Like how many troops did they have with them? 700. And it was a... Oh, the Sioux? Yeah, Custer. Custer had 700. Oh. And the Sioux, there were 7,000 Sioux. Oh, well, I said 17 uh, Custer. Oh, no, no. 700 versus 7,000. So, I mean, he was outnumbered. Uh, by a long shot. But he thought he could handle it, right? But he was wrong. So this is Sitting Bull, and he was one of the leaders of the Sioux Indians that fought Custer. And then the third strategy is the schools, Native American schools. Um, these are for children. So here's one boy. What do you notice about those two pictures? Yeah. One has long hair, Indian, mm -hmm. Right. So dress differently. What else? Yeah. Okay. So you're using that word civilized. That's exactly what the Americans thought. This was what a civilized person looked like, right? This is what Americans did not think was civilized. They thought it was more what they would call savage. What, what other differences do you notice that maybe haven't been said yet? Yeah. Yep, yeah, earrings in the first and not in the second. Anything else? Okay, so this is the same person. This is what he looked like when he first came to a Native American school, the Carlisle School. And this is what he looked like after this reforming process had begun. Here's another one. So these are Lakota, three Lakota boys when they first arrived and then after. And then they did the same thing in Canada as well. This is actually an image uh, of a Cree, uh, Native American, oh, not Native American, they call them first person up in Canada. But you can see the same kind of transformation. Here's the Carlisle School. This is in Pennsylvania. So these, these are hundreds of Native American kids who were taken from their homes, sometimes against their will, um, and taken to Pennsylvania. What, what do you notice about their faces? Let's see if I can get a little, whoops. No, that's fine. Let's see if I can get a little closer. What do you notice in the face? Do they look happy? What? Yeah. It, it looks really sad. Yeah. They don't look happy, do they? Yeah. Uh, wasn't the Carlisle School the first private school for Native Americans? It could be. I don't know if it was the first, but it's it's definitely like the most famous one that I know of. So I think you could very well be right. right about that. Yeah. They yeah. Look miserable. They do look miserable. I mean, look at look at the, these faces. You know, they're. Dressed in clothing that's probably unfamiliar, they're away from their family, they're in this strange place. If they speak their native languages, they're probably beaten. Um, they have no idea when they're going to see their families again. And I was actually talking to Mrs. Brown about this earlier. When they went home, what do you think their families thought? when they went home looking like this. They yeah. probably looked really uncivilized to them. Yeah, that's a really good point. They're so different. Like, their, their family 
family might not really recognize them, and they might get treated differently, don't you think, by the people within their tribe. So there was a lot going on here. Okay, see this quote? Kill the Indian, save the meat. So again, I'd like you to you know, turn to your neighbor, or you can do this as a table. What does that quote mean? Just want to give you two points. Yeah. Um, it's killing their like inner Indian and making a man out of them. Okay, inner Indian, uh huh. Like basically they said. Uh huh. So what's the inner Indian that they're trying to get rid of? Yeah. Like the, the their culture, their mm -hmm. language, their mm -hmm. uh, like their clothing. Yeah, absolutely. So everything that has to do with the Native American culture, now everything that kind of was unique to the Native American culture, they wanted to get rid of that. And then what did they want? those kids to absorb, you know, once you've cleaned out the Native American culture, yeah. The tradition and culture of um, the Americans. Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you're going to say? Or something different? Yeah, absolutely. So they wanted to instill sort of traditional American, European American ideas and culture and ways of doing things. Okay, so now here's a picture of some women at one of the Native American schools. What are they doing in the picture, do you think? Yeah. Um, sewing machines? Yeah, yeah, sewing machines. Good. You can see the sewing machines in the front here, and then there's all the stacks of clothing. What do you think they're learning how to do? Yeah. Work in a factory and make clothes. Okay, yeah. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yeah, so they're being taught a skill, right? They're being taught, it's called vocational education. Yeah. Do you think the lady in the back is kind of smiling? She does kind of look like she has a little bit of a smile. She might be the teacher. Yeah. She kind of looks like the teacher to me, do you think? Yeah. yeah. There's another one. So here's a picture. They're all working at their sewing machines. And then I think the next one is of the young men. So these guys, these are the young Native American men. They're learning how to make shoes. So do you think that these students at these Native American schools were learning how to be doctors or lawyers or politicians? No. They, they were being trained to do sort of the very lowest level types of jobs. Because that's what Americans thought they could do, you know, that that's, that's what they were worthy of doing. And so that's the kind of training they got there. So the other element that's going on here is changes with the buffalo. So what's happening with the buffalo at this time? Yeah. Um, I think they all got like killed out to make the Indians want to have to like go to the reservation to mm. try and make some money. Yeah, um, I should be giving out bucks. You, you should get a buck for that. Absolutely. Sorry about that. I should have should have been doing that. But yeah, absolutely. They're killing off the buffalo, and the Americans are killing off the buffalo, and they in order to help force the Native Americans onto the reservations. Absolutely. And so here you can see the map of where the buffalo were originally. So this light pink, the biggest area, that's where the buffalo used to roam. I mean, it's all the way in Pennsylvania and Ohio and even in Georgia. And then the medium pink area is where they roamed in 1870. And then in 1889, it's just these little dots, right? So they're just killing off the buffalo. Now, how, what role did the buffalo play in Native American culture or life? Yeah. Um, I thought that to be able to like, hunt, and that's how they got their food. Absolutely. What else did they do with the buffalo? Yeah. They took their skin and their clothes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. What else? Yeah. They used every part of them. Absolutely. They did stuff with the bones, right? Didn't they? Yeah. They, they, they kind of worshipped. Uh-huh, absolutely. They would they would pray after they had killed the buffalo, right? Yeah. I know that they would use the, they call it squid, mm -hmm. or eagles. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So they, whenever a Native American, you know, would kill a buffalo, first of all, they gave thanks, and they used every bit. And they didn't just do it wantonly. I mean, they just didn't do it carelessly. They killed buffalo when they really needed it. But the Americans and the, the um, settlers were just kind of slaughtering the buffalo as sort of a way to get the Native Americans off the land and into the reservation. Okay, so, yes, what were you going to say? I was going to say, another reason why it's hunted is because it's fun. 